In part three of the Room 101 series, I told you about the French Netflix series La Révolution, showing that huge octagon protecting the inner circle of our masters from us, their feudal slaves, represented by the square. Well, I'm happy to announce you that I found the better English version of that plastic cake form from 12 years ago in 2012, which can still be seen on my channel Gatse Frats. So here you see the, um, the octagon here is protecting the inner circle from the square, which is around it here. And I'll explain it all in this video in English. So here's the title, here's the channel, it's from 2012. So you just punch in the title, and um, or you scroll down in the videos in Gatse Frats, and you will find it. So, okay, I showed you in these two octagon examples, and in many more of my videos, that the octagon protects the inner circle from the square which is us. And in this video here, Octagon, the Empire of Darkness, which I uploaded here six years ago, but I made it, I don't know, 10 years ago maybe. Um, in this video, you can see more about the Octagon, and I made many more. So this is on the same channel, Gyuri. But now I will explain you how they do that psychologically and prophylactically next to the obvious more brutal military and police options at the octagon's disposal. You see in this octagonal chart there are eight possibilities at the octagon's disposal to prevent any potential threats by the people's square to the inner circle compass of the masters for coercive means in order to mold the slaves or to keep down the prisoners as they did to a homie Ross in several Swiss prisons. So here on this side you see the octogon and here the inner circle in the middle, and here the square. So the octagon is protecting the inner circle from the square, which I've shown you many times. So I can't explain this one more time to you here. That will take too long. Just watch my other videos. And this here is divided into eight parts. So this also is an octagon, because they always use the same means of symbols you know so i count them for you one two three four five six seven eight octagon and the eight points of controlling the slaves or the prisoners or are one monopolization of perception two induced debilitation and exhaustion three occasional indulgences Four, threats. Uh, five, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. Six, degradation and humi humiliation. Seven, isolation. And eight, enforcing trivial demands. I understand that you haven't gathered all the information I just gave to you. And in this video, I will completely explain all this to you into the tiniest details because this is very important. And I must say it's not that easy to understand, especially for me as a historian. This is not my uh, piece of cake, you know, here's the cake. This is not my piece of cake. And uh, like the, the, the plastic cake, um, thing in black what i've shown you with an octagon in it so but i'm going to explain it all to you and this is 
very important. So now in the next picture, it uh, the only thing that changed is here in the middle where it says Biderman's chart of coercion. So the eight octagon points of attack, the square, are called Biderman's chart of coercion, where the word coercion means the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threats. Now, doesn't that sound familiar to you? You know, if you look at the politics and the lies in the media and Pharaoh's poison and all the lies, you know. So let this sink into you because this is, you know, I've got a lot of not English, native English speakers here from all countries. And even for the native English speakers, I mean, coercion, this is academic language, you know, so let it sink in, you know. So a coercion is the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threats. So that means they're using force and threats to make us do things, eh? And to persuade us to make us do things. That's coercion. So let it sink in because this word is coming back a lot of times. You better repeat it to yourself a couple of times because this is not, you know, trivial English language. So again, coercion is the practice of persuading someone to do something by using force or threats, which is what the authorities and our masters are doing all the time. You know, at a certain time in my life, I was teaching history and politics to senior officers in the army. And I always, because these are difficult words, you know, coercion, and I always gave them a picture, you know, to go with it. So if you think of coercion, just think of a pharaoh with a whip, you know, that is persuading us, you know, to do something by force or threats, or you just imagine Swissy standing there with a whip, you know, in a Nazi uniform. This is coercion. So that makes it easier for you to remember, especially the non-native uh, English speakers here amongst us. So here you see the pharaoh with a whip, and here it says coercion. So if this difficult word is coming back, you know, you just think of the pharaoh with a whip who wants to make you do things you don't want to do. And this is the Biderman's chart of coercion. You know, uh, you guys have been with me for a while, so, you know, we can, like, get a bit more to an academic level, as they say nowadays, pop up the volume, right? And as most people, they have a visual memory. You know, this really works. So I guess you never forget this in your entire life, the word coercion and being uh, assimilated uh, with a pharaoh with a whip. And the other difficult word I just used before in connection with the Biderman chart of uh, coercion was prophylactically, it says which means preventively or protectively as against a disease or infection. You don't need to be given antibiotics prophylactically unless your symptoms meet certain criteria. So it means preventively. So they use the octagon uh, chart of coercion by Biderman, you know, preventively or prophylactically, you know, to keep the slaves, I mean, you or prisoners, um, to keep them down, you know, preventively, you know, pro so prophy prophylactically is very much connected to the um, to the Biderman's chart of coercion. The general psychology behind the octagon rules of coercion are to keep the square feudal slaves busy and under constant pressure. So they won't have the energy to stand up against the masters of the inner circle.
So here you see Biderman's chart of coercion in Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. So here you see there are American prisoners in um, in Korea, and here as well the Korean War, and they all try to shove it, you know, the Biderman's chart of coercion on the Koreans and on the Chinese, which is a complete lie, and I will explain that more to you. First of all, the name Biedermann is Swiss German and it's from the name Biedermann. And I'll explain you all about it. Just remember this, what I'm telling you here. Here you see all the eight points, octagon. So there's another, you know, proof where, where it comes from. You know, the Chinese don't really have anything to do with octagon. Eh? Here you see Guantanamo. It says, in a 1973 report on torture, Amnesty, well, Amnesty International is a joke anyway, stated that Biderman's chart of coercion contained the universal tools of torture and coercion. So, and then remember Korea, you know, the Kim Jong-un. Well, didn't he grow up in Switzerland and he was in a Swiss school, you know? So it all boils down to Switzerland, eh? the Biderman's chart of coercion. It's not at all by the Koreans and the Chinese, you know. And this typical Amnesty International, it's always the others that are guilty, you know. But never the Swissies, yeah. So remember this, and I'll tell you more about it. So again, here are the coercion methods. One, isolation. Two, monopolization of perception. Three, induced debilitation and exhaustion. Four, threats. Five, occasional indulgences. Six, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. Seven, degradation. Eight, enforcing trivial demands. And I'll explain you all and all the difficult words as well in this video what it really all means and where it comes from. Hey, Swizzy. So, once more, here in the octagon symbol of coercion are Biderman's eight points of coercion. And I'll explain them afterwards. This Swissy here, to the left, we, the political prisoners, used to call Dr. Death, the Swiss master of coercion. Here it says, Swissy. Dr. Death. This is what we used to call him. You all remember the picture of coercion and what it means. So here's coercion, Pharaoh with a whip. And here it says, Swissy prison psychiatrist, the state's expert on Biderman's chart of coercion. A hey, Swissy. So here it says pharaonic coercion, and here it says Dr. Kurt Kunz. And the Swiss psychiatrist Dr. Kurt Kunz is the main responsible for the section of political prisoners inside the Swiss prisons in order to apply the octagon rules of coercion on Switzerland's political prisoners and whistleblowers in order to break the subjects mentally, morally, and physically for the follow-up reset. Oh yes, the Great Reset, also from Switzerland. It's Elite Davos and Swissy Dr. Schwab. So here you see the man, Dr. Klaus Schwab, here it says. And here he says, Sigrid Reset, the coercion. You know, the Biderman's chart of coercion for the Great Reset. Well, do you think they might have practiced and tested Sigrid Reset? The Great Swiss Reset on some expandables inside the Swiss prison system for political prisoners using Biderman's chart of coercion to reset some prisoner guinea pigs. 
by the equally Swiss Dr. Death, leading to an enormous amount of dead humans inside the Swiss prison system. Uh, here's a list of prisoners getting murdered in room 101 in Swiss torture detention centers for political prisoners. Unfortunately, the list is only going back to 2018, which is only like five years. So here is the JVA, Justizvollzugsanstalt, it means a prison, in Landsburg, AG, that is Argo, which is a canton in Switzerland. And here's the date, there was a uh, December 21st, uh, winter solstice, eh, when they do a lot of um, satanic rituals. This year, 2023, it's a suicide, suicide. And I don't know what this means here. Okay. The next one, before that, that was in September 2023, the prison of Zolotun. Here is the, every time, here's the canton, Zolotun. Suicide, a natural death. Okay, you're in prison. So this is in June 25th, 2023, in the canton of Zug. Okay, you died just naturally in prison. Okay, sure, yeah. Here they don't even say how the person died. Also in June, in the prison in Biel, a town, in the canton of Bern, that's B-E. And here another one in Biel, uh, a, a week before, or two weeks before, they don't say why he died, you know. So it's mostly suicide, I suppose. So I'll let you look at it yourself, eh? And I also was in this prison here, Torbeck, which is in a prison. He died of a medical problem. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, he probably got suicided and took an overdose on pills, and then it's a medical problem, you know. Uh, there's a foreigner, not even a criminal, you know, uh, in Geneva, G-E is Geneva, suicide, and this one here is in Zurich, it says unbekannt, it says we don't know, uh, we don't, they don't know why he died, or they don't, they don't want to give any information. I was also in this prison here, a horrible place. That was uh, December 2022. Let's see if there's another solstice. No, there wasn't. You'll probably see more. And um, there's also in the canton of Bern a suicide. This one, er hanged, means uh, hanged himself or herself in Fribourg, the canton, FR. So here you see all the dates, eh? And here you see what prison and the way of death. And um, so this one, BL is Basel land. It's Basel. There's also BS. No, it's not what you mean, but that means Basel Stadt, the town of Basel. Uh, Swiss, I was also in a prison in BS, in the town of Basel. They put me everywhere, and I'm not even a criminal. What a, what a shame this, you know. A suicide and a suicide, a natural death, another natural death. Zurich here, this is SG, is Sankt Gallen, where the first, where the, the grandfather of eugenicism came from, Ernst Rudin. Uh, not some more suicide here, prison in, in Zurich, Gefängnis, it means prison, Baselland, Freiburg, suicide, suicide, unbekannt, they don't know. VS is Wallis, where they have the, uh, where, where, they, where most of the Swiss Guard are coming from, because it's Catholic mostly. And... Uh, so here again, Zurich, Witzwil, they put me here as well. Witzwil was a for forced labor. I had to, def I had to do forced labor, and then I escaped, uh, and I was away. For I walked for days, 
And I was away for two years. But of course, I wanted to see my children and they got me again. I was away in France for two years. They put me everywhere. So I escaped from this prison. I, I did everything and I'm not a criminal, you know. This country is a shame. It's it's a complete shame. It's it's based upon upon lie after lie after lie. This is the canton of Vaud, where um, the guy from Genesis is living. Uh, Peter, no, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. So here, suicide, suicide. This is the French speaking part. Also, a lot of suicide. This is a very horrible one, push vis, a lot of psychiatric uh, cases. I wasn't there, thank God. Uh, here, hanged, it's almost the same word, you know, hanged. If you leave away the er, it says hanged. The a umlaut, it's like an e, it's hanged. Uh, this is in Bern, St. Gallen, St. Gallen, angezündet, it means he made a fire. Terrible, terrible, terrible. What a country. What a terrible place. Oh, so we are in 2021. Let's see if there was a winter now. Yeah, almost. Well, you know, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, okay, here's a winter solstice. The 22nd is part of the um, of the realm of the of the 21st winter solstice. Of course. And here the police murdered him. Polizeihaft. Probably another foreigner, you know. This is how they do it. They hide everything, that country. Um, well, Etc. I'll let you read it yourself. Otherwise it takes too long, right? Eh? Yeah, another solstice in 2019 in the realm. They don't say how he died. Winter solstice. A lot of people die under various, well, under very strange circumstances. This one was in a psychiatrical prison, hanged. Oh man, this is horrible! Sprung aus Fenster. He jumped out of a uh, out of a window. A verwahrung. It means you did something for which you got like five years, and they can. Keep you away forever. They tried to do this with me, you know, to keep me away forever for, for bloody nothing, for bloody nothing. You know, intoxication. Well, they probably drugged him with something, right? Mm -hmm. All this is hanged, hanged, hanged. The Varkhof. I was in this one as well, in BS, Baselstadt. In this one, I was also in another one, Shelle Medley. They put me everywhere. Yeah, sprung aus Fenster, jump out of a window. So, and it only goes to like uh, 2017. So the beginning of 2018. Another one hanged here. So that's only five years. And I've been away from Switzerland over all these times from 2015. So, you know, they're asking cookies everywhere. So I stopped looking in the newspapers. And um, yeah, this is uh, room 101 in Switzerland. Murder incorporated by the Swissies and their Nazi Templars. Here, yeah, look in this video too from eight years ago. Um, I already documented all the prisoners being murdered in Swiss detention centers. Here it is from the Tagesanzeiger from Zurich. Uh, here it says, an inmate found dead in cell. And this is from, oh, what do you know? May the 16th, 2015. That was the day I got arrested, you know, the second last time. And they kept me inside for three and a half months and I lost 30 kilos. So I just uploaded this. And this was really, really triggered it, you know. They, um, you know, to put me in prison again. A lie, some, a whole bunch of things together, you know. So it's in my channel, Gatsefrats, and here's the title. So you can punch it in yourself. 
Oh, what do you know? May 16. I'll never forget that date, eh? Hey, Swasey, and I'll make you not forget it either. You understand what I mean? So, and here as well, you know. Here it says, Häftling tot in Zelle gefunden. A 33-year, you know, died. Just like that. And what they say here? Yeah. Uh, they say here Switzerland doesn't need any, you know, international laws or something like that. Here's another one, 2014. It says here a random uh, augmentation of uh, suicides in Swiss prisons. You know, <laughs> a random augmentation. Yeah, sure it is. And I got that. There was some more lovely stuff here. Ah, uh, here. It says, Ausländer erhalten härtere Strafe als Schweizer. Foreigners get harder punishment as Swiss. You know, the Swiss, they don't get any punishment at all. You know, they finance the Hamas. They finance the Nazis. And just go on. And then the Red Cross, back them all up. And the United Swiss, no United Nations, back them all up, you know. No punishment at all. And foreigners will do nothing. They just fill up the prisons in Switzerland with innocent foreigners, and especially if you open up your mouth as homie Ross. Well, Swizzy, I'm not going to close up my mouth, right? So, um, yeah, so here's the title on my channel, Gatse Frats. And I had, I had so many of these videos. I, I really tried to document it. And, you know, you see the same day they arrested me, and they managed to take my channel off using the Biderman chart of coercion on YouTube, take my channel off, pushed by the Swissies. And uh, so now it's gone, you know, it's gone forever. So here's another one that got suicided. It says in German, he got hanged 19 years old only in St. Gallen. And here is another one. From 2014, there's a lot of suicides. It's getting very suspicious, it says, almost. And, um, yeah, so this is in this video here. From 2014, as I told you, I tried to um, document it all. From October 26, 2014, when I was still in Switzerland, on my channel, Gatsefrats. Here's the title, so you punch it in yourself, if you want to know this. And to the Austrian whistleblower Wolfgang Umfogel, who got murdered in 2010 by the Swissies in their room 101, because he sold information on Swiss tax evasion. And if you criticize the Swiss banks, which I did as well, you're dead, they'll kill you. So here's the Kronenzeitung, Wolfgang Umfogel, this was his name, October 2010. So here's the whistleblower. If I wouldn't be on the road, I, I could have shown you a better picture, you know, in color and everything. So also my name was in it, as you can read here, Sean Ross, the historian. And so when the Swissies, they read this, my name, they sent me an anti-terrorist squad the Ancian from Bern, to intimidate me like a mafia and to frighten me. Like, which of course did not happen. They didn't frighten me, I mean. And they took over my words. Der Mann wurde geselbstmordet. The man got suicided. And the O2T torture method, Folter, that means torture. And uh, so this destroyed the life, this article destroyed the life of me and my family and my children. We got all terrorized. And uh, now I, I couldn't be with my family for the last eight years. I haven't been in Switzerland. So they murdered the, um, the whistleblower from Austria because uh, tax evasion. And they put them in room 101. Look, here it says Helmut Kunz. And here we see Hitler's dentist. 
Dr. Helmut Kunz, with the very same surname as Dr. Death Kurt Kunz from Switzerland. A real charming SS doctor who poisoned and murdered the six innocent Goebbels children in 1945. What a charming fella. Now look, there he is in his bright and shining uniform of the Waffen SS and the Sturmbahnführer. Oh. You yeah, know, he's look, he died in 1976, age 67. He was even in the Totenkopf Division, you know, with the uh, skull and bones Freemason symbol in it. Eh? Same thing the pirates had, because the pirates, you know, they were the Knights Templars, and they had, that's why they had this this um, endless fight with the British monarchy. You know, this is the internal war, you know, between the Republicans and the Royalists. The officers on the pirate ships, they were also of the nobility, of course, you know. And look, here it says, you know, he, Kunz, he, he injected the children with morphine. And here, he says, the German courts refused to convict Kunz. What charming, isn't it? And he remained in dental practice, highly regarded until his death. He died in Freudenstadt. That means the town of pleasures, the town of happiness. That's where he died in 1976. He died a happy man. Oh, can you believe it? So, same name, you see? So, I want to check something out. Because they're both doctors. They're both in the business of having people agonize in the same surname. And we all know that the Nazis won the war. So let's check something out. Eh? The SS baby killer, Dr. Helmut Kunz himself, hung on to life until 1976, while he murdered six innocent children and probably many more, as baby killing was the SS speciality. Kunzi clung on to his pathetic pity life, being highly regarded all the way through to the end. I told you so, that the Nazis and their Swissies won the war, and they keep doing it until this very day. So it seems very much we're dealing here with the very same Kunz practices and probably and presumably even the same bloodline. So here it says SS Dr. Kunz and SS Baby Killers. That's what the SS did. A lot of Jaywalker babies, that is. So here are the innocent Goebbels children. They look lovely, I must say. Helga, Hildegard, Helmut, Holdine, Hedwig, Heidron. They're all with an H, probably. Well, it's not the children's fault, but the age of Hitler. You know, that's what they did in these times, eh? Poor kiddies. Today's baby killers are the Hamas of the Philistines, who also get financed out of Switzerland, just as the Nazis were, which you can see in this picture here, in this video. Therefore, the equally Swiss Red Cross and Swiss United Nations, both based in Geneva, say, go ahead, Hamas, we've got your bags covered. So here you see the, well, go, go and see the video if you haven't seen it yet. There it is, same channel, here's the title. So here you can see the camp doctor of uh, Auschwitz, Dr. Josef Mengele, on a holiday 11 years after the wars in Switzerland, of course, going on a ski holiday. 
and his nickname was the Angel of Death. And he went to a Swiss ski resort, which was called Engelsberg, which means the Mountain of the Angels. So this is a real pic. These are real pictures of the Angel of Death being in the on the mountain of the angels you know they just smear it into our faces you know and so here it says Switzerland Engelsberg ski holiday 1956 Josef Mengele the angel of death with his bloodline you know the two kids here in the neutral bays of the master race and of course, you know, he was living in the uh, Schwimmbadstraße, number nine, in Kloten, Zurich. And what else is in Zurich? Well, there's the Villa Schoenberg, where Hitler got financed, where Rudolf Hess was, where Richard Wagner, the composer, where he lived, where they all were. Don't you think Josef Mengele was there as well? well of course he was, and all the Swissies, they knew it. You know, they protected him, you know. And so, as many medical Nazi war criminals, just as camp doctor Joseph Mengele and his two sons, Rolf Mengele and his son, Karl Heinz Mengele, went to Switzerland on a skiing holiday in 1956, I seriously suggest that the Kunz doctors are presumably from the same family bloodline as it's usually the case with these Nazis. Well, let's have a look and compare the Kunzis. So here is the prison doctor with his Biderman chart of coercion, leaving many dead people. Uh, Dr. Death Court Kunz, so we call them Dr. Death. And here on the other side is the Nazi doctor Helmut Kunz, who murdered six little innocent children and probably many, many others. Now, what I see here, the nose, you know, here it's very thin and here it gets very broad. You see? Here at the tip of the nose. This guy here has the same thing. Very thin, and here it gets very broad here. And also this part here in the middle, you know, it's a bit more down like this guy here. Then it's, they both have this sort of squeeze lips, you know, like, mm, got another child or something, you know, or mm, another prisoner, you know. And also the eyes, if you just look at the eyes, you know, you know, the, could just be his father or his grandfather, you know. And then the ears, What's also standing out, I, I suppose it's supposedly the same angle like this one here. Unfortunately, I can't see the other one. And um, the eyebrows as well. Oh yeah, this eyebrow is exactly the same as this one here. And of course, this one is older, you know, so he's got his skin like hanging over it. So this guy is younger. Uh, too bad he has a beard. You know, maybe we can make a police photo, eh? And shave his beard off and compare it with this chin here. You know, your chin up, just shave off your beard, mate. So, well, especially the nose, it's very much the same, you know. Like this here, getting very broad here, and this guy too here. Yeah. They got the same name, they're both medical doctors. And they're all both in the business of uh, making hell out of people's lives. So, you know, there is uh, something going on here. So here it is. I documented it in a video. You can see the video, like, here. Nine years ago. So there was October 22nd, 2014. This is the title, and here's the channel. And I'll show you more about this later. So here were the two lying police men and woman, the uh, notorious Hans Rudolf Kuni and Erika Kunz, another Kunz. You know what's going on here? 
And she just lied things together. And I, I mean, I even had three witnesses. They, they just do whatever they want. So, and then there is, of course, the corrupt Swiss lady cop, Erika Kunz, who deliberately lied stuff together to get Homie Ross back to prison and back into the hands of the other Kunzi, Dr. Death Kurt Kunz. So this here is from the video I just showed you. Here it says Kuni. This here was from the other corrupt cop Kunz. There it says Erika Kunz. Well, for this here, the Kunz, uh, they sentenced me to one year and two months in prison. Uh, it's a complete lie. And even if it would have been, if it would have really happened, you know, you, in a normal country, you wouldn't even do a day in prison. But it's a complete lie. They said that I, I shouted and I, I, I was swearing and. So this is why they put me one year and two years and two months in prison. And it's a complete lie. I mean, I don't do things like that, you know, but the Swissies do. They're swearing and shouting the whole time, you know. So it's another Kunz, you know, just like Dr. Death in the same canton of Bern. So my question is, are they family? Is it his wife or his daughter or, you know, are they related to the SS? Nazi Kunz? I mean, they all speak German, don't they? Well, three charming Kunzies in the business of making people's lives an absolute misery. Do we have some kind of conspiracy here? Maybe a Kunz conspiracy, huh? Here you can read the Erika Kunz lies and the Dr. Kurt Kunz lies. I had it published on my previous Gure channel, which Swissy managed to have YouTube taking the entire channel down, probably through some other Swiss coercion on YouTube. So here it says the triple K Kunz, which makes K, K, K. So this is the lady police, police lady Kunz psychiatrist Kurt Kunz, whom we call Dr. Death, and here the SS Helmut Kunz, the baby killer. Oh, aren't they charming, eh? And this video, actually, the KKK, they are from Switzerland, and I explain this in this video here. Here's the title. So it can only be seen now. It has been taken off YouTube. Uh, and the Swiss, he managed to take it off. Look, this is a Swiss cross. It's the same as the symbol of the KKK, you see. And I explain everything in this video, why and how. It can only be seen in the JJ base of the Jaywalkers. Uh, it's called Alive Ahava. That's A-H-A-V-A-528. -A -A and... Um, so it goes seven minutes only. And I have a channel there. Uh, this is video 193, or I only have 193 vid videos. I don't know. And uh, you see all the, uh, the Jay Walker words here and here. So they saved a couple of my videos. Here I wrote down something down about it. And so the uh, the Kunz, 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 the KKK, well, they are from Switzerland, you know. That's where they are from. So I actually found it in an old video on my channel, Gaatse Frats, from 11 years ago, where I documented it. Because, you know, I want transparency. So here it says, Kurt Kunz, psychiatrical, you know, and here... It says the uh, the Justice Department Vicari, the other criminal. So this is just high corruption, you know. The guy just. Well, I'll let you listen to the um, to the video. So it's here on my channel, Gatsefrats. 
here from uh, November 24, 2013. So here's the title, the channel, so you can punch it in yourself. This is what I wrote about it in those days. So there we are. Traded Hitler and uh, yeah, well, and killed the children of the uh, six children of the Goebbels family. There, there it is in 2002. So he made this. Um, and there was an order of his pals. I mean, this is corruption, you know. This guy, he's he's doing standard. He's using standard letters, and a lot psychiatrical analyzers, and then he just changed the names, you know, and the places. Like, this is how they do it. This is corruption. So they did this in 2002 in the uh, torture detention center Amthaus in Berg, the capital of this evil country in the base of Octogon. And they have a whole list of immigrants who had been murdered there. Real many. And this guy, he, um, he's part of that system here, killing people and terror. So this is in German about me. It says I'm crazy. Well, if you criticize Octogon, the base of evil and the Swiss state about what they're doing, then you're crazy. It says I'm paranoid. You know, like paranoid means somebody is sick and sees things that aren't. So they want me and I have been living with this, you know, on my back like for, what is it, 12 years, yeah, since 2002, 11 years. This is sheer terror. So not only the letter, content of this letter is standard, which he uses again and again. He probably used the same thing like hundreds of times. I mean, this is not me. And they forced me to speak with this guy in my life. I never, ever had any reason to see a psychiatrist, you know, no way. So, they forced me, uh, he, he spoke with me like two times 40 minutes, that's all. And then he, he wrote all this. Well, this is how they do it. And if you dare as a foreigner to, um, to criticize Switzerland, well, then you're crazy. And as you know, I criticize Switzerland. I dig in the history. I wrote articles in international newspapers in Austria and Germany and France and here in Switzerland. I do this thing on YouTube. And if you do this, if you dare to do this, the center of power of the world, where all the Freemasons are being commanded, you know, get the orders through the Templars of Switzerland, well, then you get real problems. Then you're crazy. And they did this with a lot of foreigners, immigrants. There's a lot of immigrants telling me and contacting me, phoning me here in Switzerland. And they said, well, to me, they did the same thing. And I can't see my children anymore. Exactly the same thing. And they make sure, you know, that every court case, it never makes it to the uh, Supreme Court. Or, well, you don't even have to think about the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. They make sure it stays local and then destroy the person. So this is standard procedure, what they do with immigrants. Never in my entire life I had the need to see a psychiatrist. But Swissy forced me to talk to Dr. Death, being part of Biderman's chart of coercion, psychological terror, while incarcerated as a political prisoner. And I experienced this Swiss psychiatrist by the name of Kurt Kunz with sadistic behavior and corrupt practices, who wrote 19 pages of utter nonsense about me, saying that I was mentally sick, paranoid, and whatnot. And Dr. Kunz, his terror includes seven points of coercion. Namely, starting with number one, isolation. 
as one of the eight points of Biderman's chart of coercion, of which the Swissies executed seven points on Homie Ross. So here it is, isolation. I'm going to talk about this and explain this to you. So here it says, Biderman number one, isolation, room 101. And here's again 101. So in the Swiss prison for political prisoners and whistleblowers, the Swissies under Dr. Kurt Kunz, also called Dr. Death, held me in an isolation cell for one year. And outside prison, the Swissies completely isolated me from the rest of society by not giving me a working permit, no residential permit, and constant harassment by the Swiss Nazi neighbors and the Swiss Nazi population, which you can see in this video here. So here's the title. The title is in German on this channel of mine here. This is my German channel. I uploaded it not very long time ago because it was taken down. And here you see the proofs of what I am telling, you know, a highly aggressive Nazi population. So here it is, it's only one and a half minutes, and it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. Of course, most of the times I wasn't able to film it, you know, or the police that just took my camera away and took away the evidence, you know. So here you can see the Swissies in action. Uh, what I could film, you know, when I was still living there. Die sind nicht als Mieter hier. Ja. Die Kinder müssen Die nicht Ferien. rauskommen. Die Mach jetzt das rechts. Don't touch me. Get your hands Go off out. me. Go out. Du bist auf einem Weg. Viel zu viel von den Ausländern. Ein paar sind ein paar ja. Ausländer und wir alle sollten abhängen. Was? Mal gesagt, he? Was? Polizei bekannt ist er. Ja. Jetzt zeigen wir ihnen mal an. Ja, he? mach mal. Okay. Ja, ich warte. Oh, ja, noch aggressiv werden. Oh je. Yeah. Und wie heisst du? Ich bin angefangen. Und wie heisst du? Wenn ich mich hier nicht wohlfühle, dann kann ich nichts dafür. Ihr seid hierher gekommen. Nein, nein. Wir sind jetzt auch da. Ja, das ist gut. Well, charming people, aren't they? So, due to the constant Swiss harassment by both the Swiss authorities and the Swiss Nazi population, between 2011 and 2015, during four long years, I didn't leave the house anymore, which had me completely isolated by the deliberate and premeditated terror by the Swiss population and their authorities, who are extremely organized in all sorts of crimes against humanity. So, under the supervision of Dr. Death Kurt Kunz, we can see the deliberate and premeditated application of Biderman's chart of coercion, which is an octagonal chart of coercion, meaning that Biderman must have been initiated in the Brotherhood and of Swiss descent. So here you see number one, isolation. So I did a search 
in Switzerland for Biderman because I perfectly know that the name Biderman is German or actually Swiss German. You know, as I told you, the Germans, they always get the blame for what the Swissies do, you know, because it's the same language, you know. the uh, Most of the Swissies, they speak German, you know. Um, so they anglify, you know, the names, you know. And Schweiz, it means uh, Swiss, Switzerland in German. And, you know, the E, if you just take the E and one N away, you know, so it doesn't look German anymore, man. Mann is, is German with double N. And if you take one N away, it becomes English, you know. And so they took the E and the N away. And here, you know, it's all Swiss, you know. Swiss is uh, Switzerland for, you know, in French. And this here, CH, it's like for them putting a Swiss flag in the letters, you know. They always put a Swiss flag on every product, you know, otherwise they can't digest it or something, or they think they are being poisoned by, you know, some immigrants or whatever, you know. So in letters, this is the way to put a Swiss flag in the letters. You know, here, Schweiz, Biedermann, and here another CH. It's even in, in black letters everywhere. And all these companies here, another one, it's all Swiss. And it all says Biedermann, so Biedermann. So Biedermann is definitely a, a Swiss name. And it couldn't be otherwise that the octagon uh, Biderman's chart of coercion that it comes from Switzerland because Switzerland was founded by the Knights Templars who are called octagon. You know, if you find a ruins, you know, an archaeologist or uh, a historian, you know. Uh, the, uh, which is octagonal, you know, the Knights Templars did it. So it goes on and on and on and on, you know, here, Zurich, it's all Swiss, Biderman, Biderman, here, Biderman, Biderman, you know. So I have no doubt that the Biderman's chart of, um, of coercion, it is uh, definitely Swiss, and it couldn't be otherwise, you know, because the world is being ruled out of Switzerland and the Alps, and this is one of their instruments to do so. So, as you can see here, Biedermann, so I pronounce it in the Swiss German way, is a Swiss German name which got anglified into Biedermann, leaving out the E and the N. Just like the name Huber becoming Hoover, which was common practice for the Swissies in order to disappear within the American society and become Swiss sleeper agent families that have now completely eroded the values and initial standards of America. So here you see Herbert Hoover and here J. Edgar Hoover. And just look, you know, they're like from the same family, the same ears, the same chin, the same nose, eyes. You know, it, it, you could even think it's the same person, you know, like brothers. And they become from, here it says, the Swiss Hoover family. And they made it into Hoover because the U in German is pronounced like a double O, like who. Ooh, you know, and the B became a V, like in Spanish, maybe, you know. Um, it's, um, you know, it's just, this is what they did, you know, to become this uh, Swiss sleeper agent families, you know, common practice. Compared to this octagon phenomenon of Swiss sleeper agents, the so-called Russian sleeper agents are no problem at all. Now, you really think you wouldn't recognize a Russian sleeper agent if it were only through their extravagant lifestyle and uncontrollable pulsions, as you can see here. 
So here you can see three generations of presumable Russian sleeper agents. So you see Granny with two bottles of vodka. Here's the father, the mother, and the son having happy times here. And here it says the distinctive profile of three generations of elusive Russian sleeper agents. Wouldn't you recognize a bunch of Rusky sleeper agents in the middle of the lake in Central Park, New York? So here you can see them on the, on the bottle here too. It says Russian sleeper agents, Central Park Lake, New York, presumably. Then compared to the Swiss sleeper agent, this is an entire different story. You don't see them. You won't hear them. And even when it is too late, you wouldn't even notice. Look, the mere fact that we always talk about Russian sleeper agents and never talk about Swiss sw sleeper agents says it all. Now let that phrase sink in a bit. I repeat it. The mere fact that we always talk about Russian sleeper agents and never talk about Swiss sleeper agents says it all. So here it says the invisible Russian sleeper agent kids. And here, Central Park, New York City, USA, presumably. Octogon sleeper agents are so perfect in their field that hardly ever any of their kind have been caught. They simply don't exist, and you never even heard of them. Whereas rusky sleeper agents get caught by the dozens, all trying to hold on to the bottle. Anyway, Russian sleeper agents are a temporary phenomenon that resolves itself in due time, whereas the Swiss phenomenon needs a bit of help by Homie Ross to be resolved. So. Here you see two bottles of uh, vodka, and it says self-inflicted liquidation of a Russian sleeper agent. So I had a search uh, for the name von Biedermann, which is the aristocratic version of Biedermann, and all this came out. You know, Voldemar, Voldemar von Biedermann. He is a general major, Freiherr von Biedermann. Another Freiherr von Biedermann, more Freiherr von Biedermann. And here, Louise, uh, she was born Biedermann. There was a guy from the Luftwaffe, a general major, Freiherr von Biedermann. He got a lot of coat of arms von Biedermann. He has a baroness, the baroness von Biedermann. Here got a sort of a castle, you know. And you can find it on Wikipedia, and it's it's a lot. Another coat of arms von Biedermann, and of course Pharaoh's nobility, you know, concerning the uh, the Biedermann's chart of coercion, you know, the the aristocracy of Pharaoh's nobility of von Biedermann. You know, of course, Pharaoh's nobility, they need a, um, a way, you know, to control the slaves, you know, and to do some coercion on the slaves. And Switzerland is their base, you know, so that's why there are a lot of, probably a lot of Biedermans or Bidermans in Switzerland. And um, so I asked Germans if Biedermann, is an original German name, and they said no. Although through the Thirty Year War and Swiss genocide by Swiss mercenaries under Templar command from 1618 to 1648, on the German and the Austrian peoples, the name Biedermann can be found in Germany for some 
aristocratic von Biedermann dynasties or pharaoh's nobility as these generals here and their coat of arms. And this Austrian Biedermann or Biedermann getting hanged in 1945. You probably all wonder what it says on the shield here. Well, I enlarged it in black and white and I'll show you. Well, here in black and white it says in German, Ich habe mit den Bolschewiken paktiert. A paktiert is from a pact, pact. That means an alliance. It says, I have made an alliance with the Bolshevists, which is complete nonsense. I mean, in 1945 there were no more Bolshevists. They were all murdered and a lot of jaywalker Bolshevists in 1934 by Stalin. And since then, there were only communists, you know, which is something else. The Bolshevists were, were a people's revolution and the communists was the takeover by the people's revolution. The same thing that happened in Germany when the people's national socialists they were all murdered during the night of the long knives in 1934 and exactly the same year and they're all replaced by the ss and uh, there was a, uh, a force against the people and he probably got hanged here by the ss uh, i mean the nazis uh, and the ss they're just a bunch of liars anyway you know uh, the same thing we can see today with the uh, hamas nazis same thing happening eh? just lies and lies and lies you know and of course, there's the Swiss connection of the um, uh, that brought uh, fascism and Nazism um, into Islam through Amin al Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, and uh, Francois Genou, etc. You know. So, but anyway, I'm just you know drifting away as usual. This is a Biedermann, a Austrian Biedermann, or Biderman, you know, talking about coercion probably didn't work, eh? so they he ended up like this. This is what happens when the coercion doesn't work. Number two of the Biderman chart of coercion, or the Biderman chart of coercion, is monopolization of perception, which Swissy massively applied on me. And from now on, I'll pronounce the name Biedermann in its real Swiss German form, Biedermann, like saying J. Edgar Huber for the FBI director. It, so here it says Biedermann 2, monopolization of perception, meaning they control everything what you see hear, smell, all the perceptions, you know, they have a monopole on it. I must point out here that point two, the monopolization of perception, is a direct consequence of point one's isolation. What you can see here, it says again, Biderman one, isolation. So the monopolization of perception which is in fact total control because, you know, if you only see what they want you to see, and this is all the time the same thing, and hear what they want you to hear, which is all the time the same thing, and smell whatever, you know, all the perceptions, then they can do a brainwash. They, then they can make you think whatever they want you to think. So the monopolization of perception is a direct consequence of isolation because when you're isolated the only perception you get are the things nearest around you like the four prison walls 24 7 or the images of daily aggressions by the swiss neighbors as in my case as you can see here in this video and the constant harassment of the Swiss authorities in the form of the Swiss Nazi police forcing themselves 
into your house all the time. Or the incredible avalanche of Swiss justice lies and documents arriving daily in your letterbox, as in my case. Thus, through plain deliberate terror, led by the psychological terror expert Dr. Death Kurt Kunz, the Swiss is monopolizing your daily intake of perception. So here he is, the Swissy, the expert on the Biderman's chart of coercion. And here point to the monopolization of perception. So the Swiss is entirely monopolizing my daily intake of perception, which becomes the same every day. I mean, the daily intake of perception. Without any variation. Like, for instance, a prisoner only eating a bowl of rice without salt every day, or the same watery concentration camp soup every single day. And all of this makes part of the monopolization of perception. Here it says deadly monoton monotony, brain dead, room 101. Like an old vinyl record disc getting stuck at the same part over and over again. Same perception all the time. Stuck in the groove, stuck in a rut. Monopolization of perception on the Biderman's chart of coercion. Or the very refined torture method of dripping a drop of water on your forehead every 15 seconds or so, where physically a tiny drop of water could never do any harm physically. But it is the monopolization of perception. Point two of Biderman's or Biderman's chart of coercion and the monotony of your life existing only of that drop of water every 15 seconds with your torturers who monopolize your perception that will eventually kill you. So here it says room 101, here the drop of water, and it says here the same unique perception repeated over and over again. So the only perception this man has is the drop of water. There's no other perception. And this is the monopolization of perception. All of this can be achieved through monopolization of perception of Biderman's chart of coercion. And the Swiss authorities have their psychiatrists experts on Biderman's torture, how to crack your skull and what's in it, which they've been legally studying for seven or ten years at the university and then do their PhD doctor's degree on it. Well, after having acquired all this wisdom at the university, you have to do something with it afterwards, right? How else is Swissy gonna make his fancy career? Huh? Biderman's monopolization of perception will lead to a thing which is called in Swiss German Knastkoller, which means prison madness. So here it says, Biderman's chart of coercion. And this is, was Wolfgang Umfogel, a whistleblower concerning the Swiss Nazi banks, 2010, murdered by the Swissies, Wolfgang Umfogel. And here is the prison psychiatrist who knows all about the Biderman's chart of coercion, Dr. Kunz, Kurt Kunz, just like the SS Kunz. And this monopolization of perception 
is exactly what Swissy did to me and many others, like the Austrian Wolfgang Umfogel, in connection to the Swiss Nazi banks in the torture detention center of Amthaus Bern, where all the windows were closed and only a ventilation machine brought in not enough oxygen for Swissy's code O2T, oxygen deprivation torture. So here Wolfgang again, this is the the torture, oxygen deprivation. Here it says Swiss code O2T, oxygen deprivation torture, 2010, the whistleblower Wolfgang Umfogel from Austria. And the ventilation machine of the isolation cell made so much noise that after a few days, you could only hear the buzzing of the machine in your head, monopolizing your entire perception, as in number two of the Biderman's chart of coercion. Together with the isolation, this gave just four walls 24 7 and the constant humming of the machine as my only perception of my daily life and intake for over a year, having the same effect as the water drop torture method. <laughs> I still don't know how I survived it all whereas many, many others didn't. So here it says, here you see the ventilator next to the air, yeah, going in like a, you know, like, like a knife. Loud ventilator 24-7. And this is Biderman's monopolization of perception. I was a musician at that time with sensitive ears and after the Swiss code O2T torture and monopolization of perception of 2002, I stopped making music for 22 years until 2024, as something had snapped inside. I call it Swissies by Biderman's chart of assassination. Maybe my next song will be called By Biderman's Chart of Swiss Assassination. So here it says, By Biderman's Chart of Swiss Assassination. This is how they keep Switzerland clean from the so called obstructionists, whom the Swissies call Quirulanten and about which their Swiss Nazi newspapers were full of and mostly reciting just the South African being the main obstructionist. And that was me, Homie Ross. Swissy even tried to make new laws based upon my case in order to eliminate the obstructionists quicker as you can see in this video here. So this is from 2013, but the video was like a couple of years back. And here it says, Querulanten Datenbank. That means a datenbank is a database. You know, Querulanten is an obstructionist. So if you talk about things in Switzerland, you know, which what they don't like, you know, they call you an obstructionist. <laughs> Here it says South Africa, and here as well, the, the South African, well that's me. So you can see that in this video here, and the video happens to be on the same channel as this one here, it was two years ago, probably three, from 2021, yeah, that's three years ago. So this is how they do this in Switzerland, you know, a whistleblower, they call it an obstructionist. <laughs> Can you believe it? So here's the title of the video, Swissy probed actually bug war oxygen deprivation on political prisoners in Switzerland 20 years ago on the same channel as this one here. 
Then number three on the Biderman chart of coercion is called induced debilitation and exhaustion. And I would say this is a consequence of Biderman point one, two, four, six, seven, and eight. So it says Biderman number three induced debilitation and exhaustion. As there are many non English native speakers here, I'll explain induced debilitation for you. To induce means to succeed in persuading someone to do something. It's like uh, coercion, you know, but then it's the end of it. To succeed, it says, in persuading or leading someone to do something. And debilitation means the act of making a person weak. It says, an act or instance of making a person or thing weak or feeble, often in a specific way, the resulting state of weakness. So, altogether, point three of induced debilitation and exhaustion means to make a person believe that he is weak and exhausted. And the mere thought of being weak and exhausted will finally lead to factual weakness and factual exhaustion, as the word psychosomatic describes, which basically means mind-body. And what is thought in the mind will eventually manifest in the body and eventually even lead to a premature death. So here it says, room 101, induced debilitation. So for point three, which we can see here, induced debilitation and exhaustion, we might also read psychosomatic terror, which is definitely a result of points one, two, four, six, seven, and eight. A result of one, isolation, of two, monopolization of perception, of four, threats, of six, demonstrate omnipotence, of seven, degradation, and of eight, enforcing trivial demands. Thus all leading to make you think that you're weak and leading to chronic exhaustion, which we call a burnout today. So I show you one more time using the uh, the chart of Biderman of uh, Wikipedia here one one to uh, to eight, and so actually this one uh, number three the induced debilitation and exhaustion. So to make you think that you are weak and exhausted, it's actually. A, a result of or it can be a result of isolation number one of two monopolization of perception of number four threats and number six demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience you know that makes you really feel weak and uh, and exhausted you know and number seven degradation you know if you're humiliated and degraded like in a, in a in a work camp then they really make you feel weak and exhausted number three and eight enforcing trivial demands as well so so number three you might say it's a a sub point of the of the or a b point from the a points like isolation, monopolization, threats, demonstrate omnipotence, degradation, and eight, enforcing trivial demands. So it's a result, this one. So like this, it's probably easier to understand. And similarly, isolated in your workspace for point one, the, for isolation, mobbing for points four six and seven and the monotony at your job for point number two 
might lead to a burnout, point number three, on the Biderman or Biderman chart of coercion. So I see all the burnout humans here. It says burnout, mobbing, and Biderman number three. And Biderman number three is induced debilitation and exhaustion. So through the induced debilitation to make you think that you are weak, through the mobbing, you get a burnout and the exhaustion, which you can see here. So also this is Biderman number three. And uh, some people, they just know it. And some people, they even do these sort of things spontaneously. So Swissy definitely applied point three on me by telling me over and over again that I'm a criminal, that I'm a paranoid psychopath, that I'm aggressive, that I swear all the time, which are all parts of point number three, induced debilitation and exhaustion. A vile strategy being laid out by the prison psychiatrist, Dr. Death Kurt Kunz, and very willfully applied by the collaboration of the Swiss people and their Swiss Nazi authorities. Let me tell you, Swissy, you never really broke me, but you broke my children in the process. And I promise you, Swissy, this will not be forgotten nor forgiven for what you did, Swissy. So here's my daughter, and she's just, here it says, collateral damage. For the Swiss, Dr. Kurt Kunz and his Nazi authorities, my children, I've got another two sons, they're just collateral damage. It says collateral damage by Dr. Kurt Kunz and his Swiss Nazi authorities. Now, point number four on the Biderman's chart of coercion, the threats. Well, I got a lot of those by the Swissies. Dr. Death threatened to put me in the boogie house if I would not allow him to talk to me while I was in room 101 isolation cell in the Swiss prison for political prisoners. So here it says, Biderman number four, the threats, room 101. And Dr. Death used the 19-page psychiatric report of one of his own patients and just changed the names in his digital text and put my name in it every time his patient's name appeared in his bogus report, for which he cashed in a lot of Swiss dollars by the Swiss penitentiary system in total corruption and nepotism with the state versus the individual. And around the Swiss prisons, there's total corruption and nepotism, where all want to earn a buck on some defenseless prisoner who just has a dollar tag on his back. Corrupt Swiss lawyers and corrupt Swiss psychiatrists all want to get a piece of the cake. And if you open up your, mu your mouth about this, they say you're an obstructionist or a querulant, as they say it. So here is Dr. Kurt Kunz, and here you see the dollar sign inside the bars of a prison door. Here you see the prisoner with a dollar tag on his back, like Homie Ross. And it says here, Swiss prison, corruption. I also got loads of murder threats by the Swiss Nazi police who even tried to assassinate me and shot at me while I was walking in the Swiss forest. So here it says, Polizei, Davos. And here it says, Octogon Brotherhood 
of Swiss Nazi Templars. And I tell you, they are very dangerous. They act everywhere in the world. They do assassinations. And they stand above all laws. So here you can read about it, how the, the Brotherhood of the Swiss Octogon Nazi Templars, they kill people all over the world. So, I mean, this is real. This is real information. I know I already showed it to you, but I don't know how many people will watch this video on you and haven't showed the other one. So it doesn't leave me any choice. So you just punch pause. This is an interview from 2011. This is real stuff, people. This is genuine. Ah, oh, too much. So... I was at the Bilderberg meeting, where you can see here, in St. Morris. I was there. Then some people, they found out it was me. The Gure of my first channel, Gure. And I had to do um, interviews all over. The, well, there were about 20 interviews I did uh, who, that were on YouTube. But um, because of the, um, the censorship, it... Um, uh, they have all been taken off. They're not there anymore. I think there's one left by some Italian organization. So if you punch uh, Sean Ross or Gure, um, St. Morris interview, Bilderberg interview, then uh, it will pop up. So they kill people. And it's all, you know, this is connected to the banks, just as uh, Davos, you know, the uh, the Octagon Brotherhood you just saw before. They murder people all over the world. And uh, I've been giving you the proofs and why. They're also the ones behind the Second World War. So there we are, we got it. Peter Odensov, 2011. So I'd just like to read you the beginning of the interview. Uh, it says here, interview with the Swiss banker done in Moscow, the 30th of May, 2011, by Peter Odensov. Question, can you tell us something about your involvement in the Swiss banking business? Answer, I have worked for Swiss banks for many years. I was designated as one of the top directors of one of the biggest Swiss banks. And during my work, I was involved in the payment, in the direct payment in cash to a person who killed the president of a foreign country. I was in the meeting where it was decided to give this cash money to the killer. This gave me... dramatic headaches and troubled my conscience it was not the only case that was really bad but it was the worst it was a payment instruction on order of a foreign secret service written by hand giving the order to pay a certain amount to the per to a person who killed the top leader of a foreign country and it was not the only case so yeah i'll tell you who the president of that foreign country was the African president murdered by the Swiss Octagon Brotherhood was Thomas Sankara from Burkina Faso in 1987. Here it says, so this here, it says Kantonspolizei from Switzerland and they're shooting at our images. This could be you or me. Look. It could be your son, you know, or your uncle. They're shooting at us. It's our images, you know, like a normal person. It could be you and me. And it says here, Kantonspolizei. 
And here you see them, they're hiding themselves on their, on their masks, which is actually forbidden by law, but who cares, you know? This is the government, yeah. And it says here, the Swiss Octogon Brotherhood and the Swiss assassination 1987 of Thomas Sankara of Burkino Faso in 1987. And then the endless threats by the Swiss judiciary threatening with perpetual prison sentences and extradition threats by the Swiss politics with their violent white Nazi sheep posters aggressing the immigrant sheep, which was me. So here it says, Swiss mobbing. And I got a lot of mobbing through the uh, letterbox here. Justice junk threats. Threat every time, you know, loads of threatening letters all the time, you know, they were burying me under it. So this is threat on threats on the Biderman's chart of coercion. Well, I had loads of those, eh? So as I just told you, the Swiss, they were trying to keep me in prison forever, like a lifer. And look, they got this thing, it's called an indefinite incarceration. I couldn't really find it. This is official, by the way, by the Swiss government. Uh, they even have an English translation, but they left out a couple of things here. Uh, like, for instance, if your prison sentence is only five, uh, if it's um, at least five years, you know, they, they, can, they can give you an indefinite incarceration. And they were working on it, the Swissies. Uh, you know, with things lying together, you know, to give me uh, at least five years so they can keep me indefinitely inside. So these are the Swiss laws, you know, they keep it open for, you know, any person, you know, by his own judgment, like Dr. Death, you know, the corrupt um, state psychiatrist, you know, to to keep you in prison or to leave you out, you know. Only one person could decide this, you know, and if the person, like this Dr. Death, if he doesn't like you, you, you stay inside forever, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, persons behind him and organizations and orders there uh, who are pushing him, in, him in, a, in, a, in a certain way. So you can read about it yourself. I had a bad article in German. But it hasn't been translated into English. And uh, I'll let you read it yourself. So the Swissies, they got laws, you know. So the laws that practically mean they, they can just get rid of you, you know. For nothing. For nothing. You know, it's a highly criminal country, I tell you. I hear mandatory expulsion as well, you know. That's what they do as well, you know. They, they also try to do that with me, you know. And look, this is part of this here. Oh, you can't see it. I'll show it to you. Here, you got the English translation here, German. I don't know what RM is. Uh, Fedlex. And i show you the whole page. So here... You can punch this in, and you get this and the whole Swiss criminal code, and about the indefinite incarceration. I've been living 27 years under Swiss threat, and even while being abroad now for the last eight years, the Swiss threats continue. They've completely ruined my life, deliberately. Here it says, Biderman, number four, threats. The Swiss mobbing, here you see them, you know, the, the white Swissies kicking out uh, the black immigrant. For them, I'm a black immigrant. I'm, I'm not black at all, but th that's just how it is. They see any foreigner as, as, as something black, you know. Point number five on the Biderman's chart of coercion, it is occasional indulgences. Well, I never had those in Switzerland for sure. 
And indulgence means forgiveness and reduction of penalty. It's a word usually used by the Catholic Catholic Church. You know, if you um, if you talk to a priest, you know, you might get uh, indulgence and be uh, and and lose the penalties, like you know. So here it says the Biderman number five occasional indulgences. Well. I mean, what were they supposed to forgive me for anyway, since I've done nothing wrong and always abode by the law? So here you see the Swissy justice and its huge shadow, I would say. And whatever it stands for, I don't really know. It says targeted individual. And here it says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now you hear that, Swissy? You better not do this. So technically, by executing the Biderman number five, the Swissies would admit their evil wrongdoings. And no, I never had them indulge me with Biderman number five. But I got slept endlessly by the other seven Swiss Bidermans. And I tell you, Biderman or Biderman is the type of guy who never gets enough of it. This is the Swiss way of getting Bidermaned to the end. So here again it says targeted individual and thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Hey, Dr. Kurt Kunz, you listen carefully. Did you hear that? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Did you hear this? It says, Polizei. Uh, so this is the type of guy who's delegating the polizei, and they also, they don't even need it. They just do it all by themselves. And here it says, the Swiss Biderman by the Octogon Brotherhood. Number six on the Biderman chart of coercion is demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. Omnipotence means unlimited power and omniscience, the state of knowing everything, which corresponds exactly with the Swiss behavior and of that of their authorities, showing themselves off as the master race who have total control over you and who know everything. So here it says, Biderman number six, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. So here it says, Biderman number six, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. And here you see the three white sheep with the Swiss flag kicking the black immigrant sheep as a targeted individual as you can see here uh, so when i came to Switzerland, the streets newspapers and television were full of these images and posters everywhere of these white swiss sheep targeting the black immigrant sheep and the swiss population were absolutely fanaticized and Nazified by these posters, which set them in motion, acting massively through terror, lies, and mobbing against these black immigrant sheep. And I belong to these black immigrant sheep, although my skin is white. Or do you think they simply let it be with just those hate posters as the mirror of their souls without doing anything afterwards, huh? Well, let me tell you, 
the Swissies massively set their authority apparatus into motion to delegate the desire of the Swiss population and to terrorize, mob, torture, and assassinate the newcomers while maintaining that neutral smile to the outer world. This Swiss Nazi poster definitely applies Biedermann's chart of coercion and its rule number six, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience with three white Swiss sheep kicking the other one, which is demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience with their Swiss flags everywhere and their Swiss Nazi posters in streets and in the media, the Swissies really made sure that they were the master race. And you and me, as in immigrant and inferior bug to them. And the Swiss authorities demonstrated their omni potence and total control over Homie Ross and his poor defenseless small children endlessly by coming down all the time with their omnipotent anti-terrorist Swiss Nazi squads putting guns on Homie Ross his head in front of his traumatized children. Also in the Swiss media, they showed their Swiss omnipotence, Swiss Nazi superiority, by describing Homi Ross as a pathological quirulant, which literally means an obstructionist, as the German word quer, as in quirulant, describes an object obstructing the way. So I was sort of obstructing the Swiss way, you see. And here it says, Querulanten Datenbank. That means the obstructionist database. They want to make a database, you know, putting all the obstructionists in there. Because this is about the Swiss omnipotence and the Swiss omniscience of the Biderman 6 of the chart of coercion. And if somebody contradicts this, as I did, then you are an obstructionist. And you're very dangerous to the whole Swiss idea, whatever it might be. And here it says, Zuid Afrika, that means South Africa. And Zuid Afrikaner, the South African. They, they just called me the South African. And this is from 2013. And here it says, Querulant, you know, it means an obstructionist. In the English word also, a queer, you know, pinkless killer, uh, it comes from here. You know, it's, it's, you know, somebody, you know, who's obstructing the normal way like. It's uh, the etymolog etymology of the word, uh, you know, well, I don't want to repeat it. It comes out of the Germanic, like this one here. And uh, here it says, in, uh, ein Historiker, it means a historian. And um, they put it like this, you know, like this in between uh, quotation marks, meaning that I am not a, historic, a historian, you know. And this is, again, the Swiss omnipotence and the Swiss omniscience. They know it all, and they got all the power, which is the Biderman 6. And if there's someone who says, well, you know, Swiss land was founded by the Knights Templars, they financed the Nazis, you know, then you're not a real historian, you know? You're an obstructionist. And that's why they put the word historian like this, because only the Swissies can be the real historians telling us the real history of a clean and neutral Swissieland, you know, that were so brave during World War II and took all the money from the Nazis and the gold of the jaywalkers and whatnot. You understand? So this is Biderman <clears throat> number six, demonstrating omnipotence and omni 
science and you can see it all over it, you know so in Switzerland, everyone who contradicts the swiss master race and their vitamin 6 omnipotence gets filed as an obstructionist or in swiss german ein querulant which you can read here in this swiss newspaper slapping me with a vitamin 6 demonstrating their swiss superiority over the inferior others like homie ross and his equally inferior wife and children and here it says swiss omnipotence and switzerland's omniscience versus the pathological obstructionist with pathological in between quotation marks just as the swiss he did with the word historian then what was i supposed to be obstructing anyway it has been in fact for 26 years now the swissies obstructing me to get on with my life and i only try to obstruct them from them obstructing my life so in fact i only obstruct the obstructionists and their terror by saying it's so terribly wrong what you swissies are doing and what you swissies have always been doing and i tell the whole world which makes me an obstructionist in the swiss media i guess we just found a new word for whistleblower an obstructionist well that's fine with me in fact I've been just obstructing the Swiss criminal coercion, that's all. And you just don't want to contradict the Swiss masters and their omnipotent belief system of Swiss superiority. Biderman number seven on Biderman's chart of coercion is degradation and humiliation and is of course also a consequence of the numbers one two four six and eight it says biderman number seven degradation and humiliation degradation and humiliation are a consequence of isolation monopolization of perception threats demonstrating omnipotence and enforcing trivial demands so here number seven degradation and humiliation is of course also a consequence of being number one isolated number two monopolization of perception if they make you think and see and hear the same thing all over and all over again it leads to number seven a degradation of course threats as well it's a humiliation you know and number six demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience what the Swissies are doing all the time showing them off as the the, the master race oh you know, it, it leads to humiliation and degradation and they know it very well and also enforcing trivial demands, you know, Swiss is saying, do this, do that, you know. Uh, it leads to degradation and humiliation. So the number seven um, is a consequence of one, two, four, six, and eight. Or it can be a consequence of one, two, four, six, and eight. So there are major points and then there are sub points, I would say over 26 years without a break the swissies deliberately destroyed my human dignity being number seven of biderman's chart of coercion of which the swiss prison psychiatrist dr death kurt kunz as being a psychiatrist was well aware of so here it says degradation and humiliation you know if you get arrested all the time and being targeted 
You know, this is degradation and humiliation. And actually, all the eight numbers of the chart of Biderman's chart of coercion, they're all here. Like, if you see this all the time, in the streets, you know, this is number two, monopolization of perception. And here's number four, threats. And altogether, this, this, and this is um i think number six it was um demonstrating uh omnipotence and omniscience you know it's all here showing themselves as the master race uh, you know having total control over you all the eight points are here just just right here in this image and the swissies know it and dr death most certainly as a psychiatrist he most certainly knows it, and he executed it on his guinea pigs. And here's why we called him Dr. Death, because under the supervision of Swiss doctor Kurt Kunz, all these young people on that list I showed you just before got suicided with the help of Biderman's chart of coercion through which Dr. Death probably got another academic degree, just using prisoners as guinea pigs, as the Swissies also did in Auschwitz by the ethnical Swiss Dr. Josef Mengele, called the Angel of Death, who quietly lived in Switzerland after the war protected by the Swiss authorities. Swiss Dr. Death, his death list is just the tip of the iceberg, as it's only going back five years. And from 2010 till 2015, I documented hundreds of death cases on my number one Gure channel, which YouTube took down under pressure of the Swissies and their Dr. Death. So here you can see Dr. Death, Kurt Kunz. It's in between quotation marks because this is what we call them. And here, the angel of death, Dr. Josef Mengele, after the war in 1956 in Switzerland on Happy Holiday, with his son, Rolf. Look how he's smiling. They're all happy, you see. And it's both in Switzerland. It's always in Switzerland. And, of course, also on Biderman's chart of coercion, the number seven, degradation and humiliation of being brutally arrested by abusive Swiss cop Hauser and his Nazi Brotherhood on July 16, 2015, in front of your crying children, as Swissy did with me, all the time being humiliated by shouting and swearing Swiss prison guards and Swiss Nazi cops, the humiliation in Swiss courts by Swiss corrupt lawyers being transported, handcuffed, foot cuffed, with a bandage over my eyes. All of this and much more by the deliberate Swiss application of number seven of Biderman's chart of coercion. Here you see my daughter here too, traumatized, age three years only. I think this was shortly after. And the abusive Swiss cop Hauser on July 16, 2015. You know, there's, we, we are not being protected by any law anymore. And the only thing I can do is put it on YouTube. I tried everything. I went to the Human Rights Court. I, I dropped a complaint against Switzerland. A Schengen country, you know, three times. There's nothing you can do, you know. So I hope this information will stay somehow and people will copy it, you know, 
and otherwise it will just disappear and they just got off with it, you know, as usual. Then, Biderman's chart of coercion, number eight, enforcing trivial demands, telling you in prison, do this and do that and don't do that, trivial orders that don't make any sense at all. Like on July 16th, 2015, ordering me not to look at my little three-year-old daughter while she was crying her heart out during the brutal arrest and face against the wall by the abusive Swiss cop Hauser. And don't talk to her as I tried to comfort her. Or in Swiss prison, forbidden to use a mattress in my back for reading next to the blinded window to get a little bit of light for reading in order not to use that horrible cold neon prison light or the trivial demands during prison transport don't stand there stand there sit down etc so here it says enforcing trivial demands which is the rule number eight of Biderman's chart of coercion there are eight for octogon so the swissies and their swiss octogon base of all evil deliberately and premeditatedly applied seven of the eight octogon vitamins on me and my family and the points one four and six for one isolation four threats and six demonstrating omnipotence are the head points of which the sub points two three five seven and eight are the consequences like two monopolization of perception three induced debilitation and exhaustion five occasional indulgences and seven degradation and humiliation and eight enforcing trivial demands as for example let's take number five occasional indulgences and eight enforcing trivial demands fall on under number six demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience so through Eight, enforcing trivial demands and five occasional indulgences. Um, they are demonstrating six, the omnipotence and omniscience. Octogon is the top of the Nazi Templars who are based in Switzerland and whom I had infiltrated. And therefore, there are eight Bidermans for the coercion by these Templar republicans so that all their initiated freemasons can recognize the origins of the octogon vitamins of coercion over humanity by the swiss von biedermann of pharaoh's nobility so here it says the swiss octogon organization therefore I have no doubt whatsoever that Swiss Dr. Death Kurt Kunz presumably belongs to the Freemason Brotherhood, which is a secret organization carrying death in their creepy logo. Well, why the skull of death? Do they enjoy to inflict death upon others? like the ss skull of death of the very same organization and their baby killer ss helmund kunz with the same surname as our dr kurt kunz here so let's summarize the biderman chart of coercion here it says the swiss biderman chart of coercion because the name Biedermann is out of the Swiss German Biedermann. So, and let's summarize how they rule the entire world out of Pharaoh's base in the Alps. 
It says, how to control people. I hope you can read it. I'll read it for you. Remember that this is the vicious criminal third degree version. There are also softer first and second degree versions of these procedures that people use in everyday living, business, socially, raising children and working with colleagues, peers, employees. There are psychological and physical uh, control. So here are the eight octagon charts of uh, coercion. Number one is isolation. It deprives a victim of all social supports of his ability to resist, it develops an intense concern with self, makes victim dependent upon interrogator. So here are the variants. Complete solitary confinement. Well, that's what they did with me. Complete isolation, semi-isolation semi, semi and group isolation. Well, they did this with my entire family. We got, it was a group isolation. We got completely isolated, you know. Uh, number two, monopolization of um, perception. Of course, this is the American way of writing with a Z, which the Americans call a Z. In English, it's, of course, with, a, with an S, monopolization. Uh, fixes attention upon immediate predicament, fosters introspection, eliminates stimuli, stimuli, competing with those controlled by captor, frustrates all actions, not consistent with compliance. Variance, physical isolation, darkness or bright light, barren environment, restricted movement, monotonous food. I already told you about that. And Number three, induced debility or debilitation and exhaustion. Weakens mental and physical ability to resist. Variance, semi-starvation, exposure, exploitation of wounds, induced illness, sleep deprivation, prolonged constraint, prolonged interrogation, forced writing, overexertion, threats, Cultivates anxiety and despair, threats of death. I suppose he did that with me. Non-return, endless interrogation, isolation against family, um, vague threats, mysterious changes of treatment. Well, threats against family, they did that as well. The Swiss is dead. Number five, occasional indulgences. Provides positive motivation for compliance. You know, if they change the attitude all of a sudden, you know, they're nice, like Mr. Nice Cop and Mr. Bad Cop, you know, this is number five, occasional indulgences. Then Mr. Nice Cop comes around, you know, and you open up and start talking, and then all of a sudden, Mr. Bad Cop comes again. And then, you know, then there is the compliance, you know. Uh, hinders uh, adjustment to deprivation. Occasional favors, fluctuations of interrogations, attitudes, promises, rewards for partial compliance, uh, tantalizing. Demonstration of omnipotence and omniscience suggests futility of resistance. You know, the Swiss, they are, you know, they are showing off as being all powerful. So they, you know, like all these these posters in the streets, and you know they're aggressive police and all that. So you know, so you don't want to resist. You know the futility of resistance. It's like number one battle, the battle of the mind, and variance, confrontation, pretending cooperation taken for granted, demonstrating complete control, victim of victim's uh, fate. Degradation and humiliation makes cost of resistance appear more damaging to self-esteem than uh, capitulation, reduces prison, prisoners to animal level concerns. Variants are personal hygiene prevented, filthy, infested surrounded surroundings. Well, Swissy did that with us, you know, we had mattresses. We had all sort of little insects in there. Everyone was scr scratching and, you know, we were, people were bleeding because of it. And I felt so pity, you know, for all the um, circumcised Muslims. 
because they didn't have the uh, the creation's um, protection skin anymore over their their private parts. You know, this is why the the, the creation made the uh, the foreskin. You know, and I was so happy I had the foreskin, so they didn't bug me. You know, at the um, you know that that part of my body. You know. Uh, demeaning punishments, insults and taunts, denial of privacy. Uh, number eight, enforcing trivial demands develops habit of compliance, like force writing, enforcement of minutes rules. So here they are. This is what they do. To be able to invent something perfidious like this and bite them and chart of coercion. One must have a superior intelligence, a perfect analysis of humanity, and a covenant with evil, as you can read here in the image where it says covenant, and then sell yourself as an angel being neutral and clean and so innocent and totally coherent with the entire deception we're facing here, the Biderman's chart of coercion is being presented as in connection with North Korea and China, as you can read here in Wikipedia. Here it says here, here's the Biderman's chart of coercion. You see the poor Americans in Korean prison camps. And here it says, you know, Albert Biderman, a social scientist with the US Air Force, was assigned to research why many American prisoners of war captured by communist forces during the Korean War were cooperating. You know, it's always like, it's always China, North Korea, it's never Switzerland, eh? And here, psychiatrist Lifton conducted similar research into the same Chinese method, coining the term thought reform, now known as brainwashing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the North Koreans did it. It's far away, yeah, so nobody thinks anybody's going to do it. Nobody's going to apply it to the uh, Europeans, to the white race and the Americans and the rest of us. You know, it's only local, it's far away, don't worry. But in fact, the Kim Jong-un dictator bloodline is very much connected with the Swissies, with Kim Jong-un going to a Swiss school in Kurnitz, Bern, Switzerland, where I went filming for you 10 years ago in 2014. And look, it even says in the newspapers in 2009 that Commander Kim speaks Swiss German. Yo, a Korean speaking Swiss German. Not even a German speaks Swiss German. No, I'm serious. You know? So here's the, uh, on my channel, Gatse Frats, um, from May 31, uh, 2014. And uh, here's, the, um, here's the School for Dictators, Lieberfeld Steinholzli School in Lieberfeld, Bernick, or Königs, Hildegardstraße 19 to 25, and the apartment Kirchstraße 10 in Lieberfeld, Bern, near Königs. I went filming there, where he lived, where he went to school. Immediately the, the police popped up, you know, of course. Uh, the Nazi octagon brotherhood, they, they popped up immediately. So, I mean, if young Kim, he went to that school there in Switzerland, you know, then already his father, Kim Jong-il, I think his name was, he already had the Swiss connection because he put them there. And then his father as well. So these poor Koreans have no, nothing to do with it. They are prisoners in their own country, you know, and being kept prisoners through the Biderman chart of coercion by these Swissies who look like Koreans, you know. The Chinese, they call them bananas. Uh, that means yellow from the outside and white from the inside. 
So here it says Biderman's chart of coercion is Swiss and not Korean. He's seen with all the Swiss cheese here. So young Kimmy here is uh, eating cheese as a Swissie, while the rest of the Koreans are lacto intolerant and can't even digest dairy products, which makes them vomit. Apparently, the uh, Asians, they lack some enzymes in the intestines, thus making Kim Jong-un only Korean from the outside, while perfectly a Swiss cheese gobbling Swissy from the inside. Sort of an alien covenant with the monster inside taking over its host. Now, if he would be only shooting holes in the Swiss cheese, that would be awfully nice. It's a easy Kimmy shooting holes in the Swiss cheese with his missiles and the holes in the Swiss cheese. Eh? That would be so nice if he would be only doing that. So here you can see Klaus Schwab, Davos, the WEF, the World Economic Forum. And here the pharaoh with his whip. Here it says Biderman's chart of coercion, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, during Pharaoh's Berg War. I can't use the other name. You know what that means, hey? And as the entire pharaonic bug war and consequent pharaoh poison come out of Switzerland by Klaus Schwab, Davos Weff, Hans Rue de Giger, Novartis, Roche, United Nations in Geneva and its wealth, World Health Organization also in Geneva, which I've proven in many of my videos. It is therefore no wonder that during Pharaoh's poison attack, Pharaonic bug war upon humanity, the eight Swiss octagon vitamins were applied on the total of humanity, with seven billion human beings slapped with the Swiss vitamins. Presumably based upon the psychiatrical anal analysis of Dr. Death Kurt Kunz, writing his academic essay upon the sufferings and collateral deaths of his clinical prison guinea pigs. And as you know, they test everything somewhere. I'll read to you here how the eight Swiss vitamins were applied in 2019, 2020, 2021 and 2022 on 7 billion humans. So it says here, the, well, I forget about this word, I'm not, you know, um, coercive methods for eliciting individual compliance, the Biderman Report of 1956. I can't pronounce this. This is Pharaoh's Bug War. Yeah. And so uh, we already did this here. So now concerning the um, Pharaoh's Bug War and Pharaoh's Poison afterwards. So first, Biderman number one, isolation. So there is social distancing, isolation from loved ones, massive job loss, solitary confinement, semi-isolation, quarantines, containment camps. So this is definitely number one of the Biderman chart of coercion, isolation. Number two, monopolization of perception. Restrict movement, create monotony, boredom, prevent gathering, meetings, concerts, sports, dominate all media, the 24-7 sensor information. So it's the monopolization of perception. Oh, we got that one too, eh? Number three on the Biderman's chart of coercion, induced debilitation. Forced to stay at home 
All media is negative, not permitted to exercise or socialize, which uh, weakens you mentally and physically, which it says here, and gives you exhaustion. People become worn out by tension and fear. Uh, here, number four, threats and intimidation. Threaten to close business. Uh, levy fines. Predict extension of quarantine. Force vex, oh, I can't pronounce that. Create containment camps. You know. uh, here, uh, the threats and the fear, it gives demands and consequences for non uh, compliance. And um, yeah, so to threaten to close your business, and it's all, uh, it's, they're all threats here. And also the threat, you know, to get Pharaoh's poison inside and the mark of the beast and uh, you know there are many more things yeah so number five occasional indulgences allow reopening of some stores and services you know the nice cop comes around the corner eh, and says oh you can open up again let restaurants open but only at a certain capacity increase more people allowed together follow concessions with tougher rules no, then afterwards, the bad cop comes again. No, number six, demonstrate omnipotence and omniscience. Shut down entire economies across the world, create money out of nowhere, force dependency, and develop total surveillance with uh, nanochips. And uh, I can't pronounce that. You know, and also, like, put on uh, the thing on your face, you know, that's demonstrate omnipotence. And complete, you know, even in a shop, you know, people have to, are, are telling you what to do, what not to do. And um, it, giving a lot of power to all, to the, uh, the uniformed ones, you know, demonstrate omnipotence. Okay, number seven, uh, degradation and humiliation. Uh, shame people who refuse uh, the masks, don't distance. Uh, make people stand on circles and between lines. Make people stand outside and wait in queues. Sanita uh, sanitation stations in every shop. You know, like do this, you know, make your wash your hands. And it's, it's a complete humiliation and degradation, especially for the children, you know, sitting in school the whole day with a mask completely you know degraded to to nothing you know and and the, the a child will immediately start to think that he or she is nothing you know to make good obedient slaves right so the last one eight enforcing trivial demands family members must stand apart masks in home and, they, and even when having uh, this here Random limits on people allowed to be together. Uh, sanitizers to be used over and over in a day. Yeah, it's like in the prison. Stand here, stand there, do this, don't do this. You know, enforcing trivial demands. It's, it's trivial because, you know, it doesn't make sense, you know. So all the eight uh, vitamins, you know, seven billion humans were slapped around with it, you know. And the whole vitamin things come out of uh, what you can read here. It all comes out of the neutral base of the master rays. So the vitamins come out of here, uh, Bidaman, yeah, and also the um, Pharaoh's uh, bug war and Pharaoh's poison and uh, everything that's why it's octagonal it's octagon like this one here you know you draw a line you get an octagon just like these one eight of them that's not a coincidence so i repeat here with this lovely image the neutral base of the master race out of where the entire world is being ruled and the targeted individual that's 7 billion targeted individuals.